Hello everybody, welcome back to Math 1314, Matt Moore on Math. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 3, Section 2. Section 2 deals with quadratic equations, quadratic functions, and zeros of quadratic equations. So, what is a quadratic? Whenever you say quadratic, it can be either an equation or a function. We'll talk about those later. But whenever you hear it's a quadratic equation, a quadratic function, we know we have to look for that part of the equation. If the largest exponent is a 2, then it's quadratic. So, it's an equation. with degree 2. Well, degree is the highest exponent. I actually said largest, not highest. Because highest mean... <laughs> okay, this was higher, so it's a... No. It's the largest exponent on the entire equation. That's the degree. So quadratic is, is an equation with degree 2. The graph is a parabola. It either looks like this or like this. We know it looks like that because earlier in an earlier video we talked about If the degree is odd, if the degree is odd, then both ends of the graph point in different directions. For example, an x cubed function, the graph looks like that. Even the cube root function, this is an odd number, the graph looks like this. The ends go different directions. If the degree is even, then both ends of the graph point in the same direction. So x squared from our library functions like that. x to the fourth would look something like this. Of course, it's it'd be longer, longer equation. All right, so that's important to know when we start doing all this stuff. All right. So also, quadratic equations. Since it either opens, we call this opens up. We call this opens down. What determines whether it opens up or down? In front of x squared, this some coefficient. If there's nothing there like x squared plus 2, then a is equal to 1. Otherwise, if A is positive, 
then the graph opens up. If A is negative, then the graph opens down. If it opens up, if it opens up, that point on the very bottom is called the vertex. So is this, actually. They're both called vertex. It's the highest or lowest point. If it's opened up, then we have minimum value. I ran out of space. Minimum. It's the lowest point. If it's if a is the leading a is negative, then we have a maximum. It's the highest point of the graph. All right. So, just by looking at it, we can tell whether just by looking at leading the A in front of the X, we can tell whether we have a minimum or maximum. If it's positive, it opens up, so we have a minimum. If it's negative, it opens down, so we have one highest point. Alright. Some more stuff we can tell. We talk about solutions to quadratic equations. We can have three types, but there's only three types of solutions we can have. Not really. Three, three solutions possible. Not really types. So our graph can look like this, where the vertex is the only point touching the x axis. So, therefore, when we have one solution, remember, solutions. are the x-intercepts. So since it only touches it once, we only have one solution. The graph can look like this. So we have two solutions. Or it can look like this. But we have no solutions. Actually, it's the no real solutions. Because as we learned last time, we can't, if it's not real, it's going to be imaginary. So, in this case, we'll have two imaginary solutions. I guess so. Now, looking at this, because our degree is 2, this degree tells us the maximum number of solutions. Maximum number of solutions possible. Okay, just by looking at an equation, you can tell me the, the shape of it, the direction, how many solutions we can have. Quadratic equation versus a quadratic function. Should I put a colon there? So, a quadratic equation looks like this ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. A quadratic function 
is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the difference. If it's a function, you have to have f of x somewhere. If it's an equation, quadratic equations always have to be set equal to zero before you can solve them. And that's why this is called the standard form of a quadratic equation. And of course, a cannot equal zero. So again, just by looking at this, ax squared. Now, it, since the square is the biggest exponent there, it's called the leading term. Now, each term is separated by plus or minus. So we have three terms. These are called trinomials. Alright, so the leading term is what you look at. If the highest exponent, if the exponent of the leading term is a 2, it's quadratic. If it's 3, it's cubic. If it's 4, it's quadratic, and so on and so forth. So it also tells us the shape, the direction. A is called the leading coefficient. So the coefficient of the leading term is a. So, so a, the absolute value of a, whether it's positive or negative. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, we learned from our transformations that we have a vertical stretch. In other words, from the original, this is just y equals x squared. This one's y equals ax squared when a is bigger than 1. If it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. So, if the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, then we have a vertical shrink. If our original function, x squared was that, Then if A is a decimal or a fraction, it gets wider. Alright. So far so good. So let's look at we discussed that enough. So let's look at solving quadratic equations. Solving quadratic equations. For simplicity purposes, from now on, instead of writing quad quadratic equations, I'm simply going to put QE. Because it takes way too long. In solving QEs, There are three types. Of QEs. The 
first type. Only two terms. Two terms. These are called binomial. This one has two separate ones. So even though it says three types, this one has two of them. The first one we're going to talk about. If both terms have an x. Of course, in all of these examples I'm going to give you here, since we're talking about quadratics, there one of the terms has to be a x squared. So, if both terms have x, this is how you solve them. These are your steps. First step. Set the equation equal to zero. Second step factor out what is common in both. Terms. That means also x is one of those things that gets factored out. But when you factor something out, we're going to have two separate equations. Set both equations equal to zero. and then solve them both. Solve for the zeros. Remember, why is it called a zero? It's called a zero because if you plug that value back into the original equation it will equal zero okay so let's look at that I try to keep this little side open for the example Let's say I have x squared equals 3x. Only two terms, they both have x's. So I, I, this one satisfies. First step, set it equal to 0. So I have to subtract 3x from both sides. So I physically take this one and move it over. That's the first step, set it equal to 0. What do they both have in common? They both have an x in common. So I take an x out of both of them. I'm left with x minus 3. Because now they're linear. So powers are 1. They're both linear. I set them both equal to 0. And I solve them. Well, this one's already 0, so that's one of my solutions. And the next one, x equals positive 3. Those are my two possible solutions. I shall always put step 5 is CYA. Check your answer. Always. Because we're going to get to parts later on where 
One of them, or both of them, may not work because of the structure of the equation. So when we check our equation, we put 0. 0 squared equals 3 times 0. Yes, 0 equals 0. That works. Let's put 3 in there. 3 squared equals 3 times 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. So that works. So they both work. So those are my solutions. All right, so that's the first type. If they if you only have two terms and they both have x's. The second type. Remember, you only have two terms. Only one term. The a has an x. So only one term has an x. It's the, it has to be the ax squared. If it didn't, it wouldn't be a quadratic equation. The steps. Move all terms with x to one side of the equals. Move all terms without x to the other side. Remember, now what you're going to have, I'll, I'll work this one out as we're going along. Only one term. Two terms, only one of them has x. So move all the x's to one side, non-x's to the other. So here, i got to add 9 to both sides. So I have x squared equals 9. Check. All the x's to one side, non-x's to the other. So step 3, so now I have to solve it. Remove the exponent. How do you get rid of the exponent? By square rooting both sides. So here, I square root the x squared and I square root the 9. So the x squared and x cancel out. Square root of 9 is 3. But there's a problem. We only have one answer. Where is the other one? No. Whenever you square root an x squared number, always Put a plus or minus in front of the answer. So whenever I, I square root of an x squared, so I have to put a plus or minus. Which means there are two possible answers. x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. In other words, Back in our equation here, 3 squared is 9, check. Negative 3 squared is also 9, check. So that's why whenever you square root a, uh, something that's squared, the answer is positive or negative, because the square just gets rid of the sign. Okay, that's two of the types. They only have two terms. If only has two terms, remember they're called binomials. If both terms have an x, you do that. If only one term has an x, you do this. So those are the easy ones. 
Now if you have a trinomial. Yeah, you put a uh, in there. A trinomial is an equation with three terms. That's a trinomial. Remember our standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. One, two, three. So that's a trinomial. That's an example of a trinomial. So if it has three terms, the highest power is a square. We have th three ways to solve these. 